Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the third floor. Today, we are finishing off our discussion on steroids and embarrassing stories. Well, more so, we're switching to embarrassing stories because we finished our uh, steroid discussion in part one. This is now part two, and we talk about all those cringeworthy moments in our lives that made us feel just awfully awful vomit feeling in our stomachs. Uh, we're hopefully going to tell you some stories that make you laugh. With us today, we have Justin. What's up, guys? I'm back. We have Jake. Hello there. And we have Lee. Hola. All right. So I think we're starting off with Jake. And luckily, I was here for this one. And I'm going to try not to cry when he tells his story because it makes me cry every time. But Jake, your embarrassing story to kick us off. What do you got? It's just really heartfelt and moving and touching. And that's why Joe brings Joe to tears every time. It's totally not the (laughs) humility of the situation. But, um, so this happened not too long ago. This is like two and a half years ago. This is right when we, after we graduated college. Um, so, you know, so Lee moved away. Uh, so he wasn't there and they really, the only one local, I think Justin was working at the time, but anyway, me, Joe and our other buddy that you might, you guys might meet one day, Parker, we're all, we decided to go out and get some drinks, you know, Saturday night. And I don't know what prompted us. I think it was Joe wanted to dance, wants to go to this this grimy club that we used to go Typical to. Typical Joe. Typical Joe. In our undergrad. Joe in a grimy club. In a grimy club. We're all thinking of the same one, everyone. So, um, wait, really? Oh yeah, oh yeah, the one that closed down. Yep. Oh. Yep. Um. So this place closed down because of COVID. Thank fucking God. I hated that place. It was just like hey. dirty. But Joe loves it because he loves to dance. You know, I I'm I, oh, I feel indifferent about dance dancing. Music. I'm I you know I can get into it if I'm drunk enough. I was DDing that night, so I was perfectly sober. Last place I kind of want to go is a club to dance, right? It's particularly at this one club because typical club orientation, right? You have the people dancing in the middle, and then you have just this this like outer layer if you will, this, this like <laughs> membrane of just creepy dudes, just like staring in there. And I was, I told myself, I am never going to be one of those dudes that just sits out there and just watches people dance. So I go in, I go into the dance floor. Right. And I'm just like, all right, I'll make the most of it. So I'm not drinking. I think I have a water in my hand. I'm just kind of doing that, like bobbing back and forth that like white people do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the typical hip, typical hip swing and i'm white so i can say this right <laughs> do we we have Leave no ri- alone, just man. i have no rhythm right because i'm a horrible dancer and um Bob and power somehow this this girl comes up or i guess this full-grown woman comes up to me and says like hey do you want to dance and i'm just like no no i'm good like from that town of footloose dude it's fine like i don't want to dance and she's like okay um little though i know this probably made her furious <laughs> insightful rage um she was also pregnant at the two that was there was something that was no that was noticeable right because she had like a disproportionate disproportionately rounded belly compared to the rest of her body right so it's a very telltale sign that she's pregnant and <laughs> just like i'm pretty sure she had like a coarse light in her hand i'm like what is this lady doing <laughs> right <laughs> so i'm just like oh i'm just with with joe joe's going nuts on the dance floor right and then you know our buddy parker does the same thing we do we do the white boy shuffle you know a little bit he's he's having a good time and then all of a sudden she must have caught me like when i was doing like a hip thrust to the side so i was just my core was thrown off so i couldn't brace but i just oh yeah that's what it was i just feel this strength at the back of my neck and i'm like oh what the fuck is happening oh, right i just feel something no. grip the back of my neck and just start pushing me and i can't no. i can't stop it I can't stop it. Whatever's <laughs> happening is it's gonna happen, dude. I cannot fight back. I hear I feel like this my belt loop get pulled and it's like pull oh, pull, no. out, pull my butt out and sh- and I'm just like completely disproportionately just in a bad ergonomic angle. I'm just freaking going He's down. Bent over. I'm bent over like a folding table. Right, <laughs> dude. Bashing my forehead on the floor almost. And I just hear the, oh. feel this pelvic thrusting right up against me and i'm like what the fuck is going on what the but it's just like i am just stuck in this this cradled position right and i just can't escape (laughs) i'm just like help 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 
<laughs> for like 10 seconds and then I managed to like shrug off I look and it's that pregnant lady again she literally took me by the neck and she bent me the fuck over and she started pelvic thrusting me right in my butthole dude and I just was just like what is going on she was so strong like the strongest person I've ever contacted like, I, used, I used to do jujitsu with Lee and no one grappled like she grappled she's just so strong she's like the strength of a, a full-grown woman and an unborn fetus like she's so strong <laughs> pregnancy strength i right. got i got collapsed in the middle of the club everybody saw and i was just i never <laughs> went there ever i i never went there ever again and luckily it closed down so that memory can just die and i'll have to have a ptsd event every time i go up there <laughs> We'll have to go get the VCR tape of that. Yeah, the, I know. Get the security footage. Today, it was one of my favorite things ever. Would be an understatement. Yeah, Joe, let's hear let's hear let's hear a little bit from your perspective. I'm curious about the third party, the third eye view. I was I was dancing like right in front of him, and I, when I saw this pregnant lady talk to him, and he like brushed her off, and she took it like well. She's like, oh, all right. So I'm dancing, I'm having a great time, and then by the next time I look over, I see this pregnant woman behind him making that vice grip motion with her hand and she pinches him in the back of the neck and then she starts pushing and i see jake's face go from like smiling having a good time to just confusion and then to fear as his head getting closer and closer pure to the floor terror and then he's he's at a pure 90 degree angle and this woman like a like a pure rodeo person was just one hand in the air one hand on his neck just going to town <laughs> and i was like wait is that lady pranked <laughs> Dude, she, I could, I could feel her, I could feel her baby bump just like resting on, the, resting on my like freaking sacrum. I'm like, what is going on, dude? It's like a perfect table for her. She's done this before. She was an, oh, she did it before. Oh no. To give, to give Parker credit, our friend Parker's a very strong man, and he went over and pushed this pregnant lady real hard, real hard. Just whoop. I just needed like, her across the, the room a little bit. God. She I'm, needed it, it sounds like. And I'm just like... <laughs> he did. I'm like, thank you, Parker. Thank you. Damn. Very, very weakly. I was, dude, I was, I've never been the same. I, I don't trust clubs now because of that. I've never been the same. <laughs> it was Wait, a life-altering so event. Since I know this club, was it was it uh, DJ side or bar side of the dance floor? Oh, it was right in the center. Yeah, I feel like right we need to bring it Wow! Yeah, right, right under, re right under the disco ball. I love so much. Wow! Yep. We need to bring this back. October fourteenth, yeah. everyone listening, come to uh, come Oasis to our nope. club. Don't say it. Come to our club. Come to our club. <laughs> this is not the club where it happened. So I, I will also be there. And but I, my eyes will be In on Portland, everyone. Maine. No one can be trusted. Lee, stop. Hey. I I got one too now. Uh, I, I remember this story that I think is pretty funny. Perfect. Like, oh, all right. I remember. All right. Well, let's hear it. Uh, all right. So, unfortunately, only Jake was there at the time. Um, but Joe and Justin have heard multiple times about this. But that's typical. <laughs> Jake's there for all my downfalls. And um, we're in the beautiful uh, contemporary country of Belize. <laughs> in in the uh, winter of what was it twenty twenty eight no no twenty eighteen <laughs> and uh, I think was, yeah yeah I think it was twenty eighteen <laughs> and yeah. uh, one of our friends was laying down on the oh, on no, a beach so towel oh. I know what story this is I love this story so much go ahead I feel like I'm gonna because uh, I'm I'm very embarrassed by it. looking back on it I I, I talked with my significant other about this recently and i was like i can't believe i did that um because <laughs> wait should, should, we, day... should we provide a little bit more background <laughs> yeah you, you, no. you do it dude you're gonna do better than i do i'm okay. like five years okay so uh to, to lay a little background to this story so we went to belize as part of a travel course um at uh -huh. our college right it was a it was a coral reefs course this like blow away <laughs> upper level biology class. We all had to take like a four hundred level bio. This somehow like got drunk. <laughs> this somehow met the curriculum. And part of the travel course is for your laboratory. You don't meet for lab during the week or during the school year. You go for a ten day lab retreat in Belize, and it's basically just snorkeling and getting drunk. And it was just so much fun. So, um, our buddy Austin, who you'll you'll hear about probably every episode. Austin, if you're watching this, fuck you. Um, fuck you. And uh, he is just like 
everything that happens with him is that man is a story. Um, one of this, one of the ladies that was in our class, Austin found quite attractive, right? Um, and Xavier made a bet that if um, good old smooth Austin, who's got the social skills of a toddler, uh, could make a move on this girl in Belize, there would be a payment of five hundred dollars to be made. And a handshake. I didn't have it at the time. And, and a handshake. That was, I think, that was a big driving force too. And a gentleman's uh-huh. handshake, if Austin could, you know, make it happen with this lady. So Austin's just all-time commitment on the trip, just like nonstop, overbearing, just like completely, completely on top of it. And um, things at one point for Xavier might have been looking a little grim. There was a part where they were laying on the beach together, on a towel, very close proximity. And I'm sitting on a bench, like probably a hundred feet away with Xavier and we're talking about it. And Xavier goes, I'm really nervous. You might do it. I'm going to have to do something. I'm like, what are you going to do? He's like, I don't know. I gotta go for a walk. So Xavier goes walking around. He like, he like wildly oh. for the, for the everyone listening, for my kids listening. And he circles around the entire camp. And then would you like to describe what happened next? Oh yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> all right it, it's 77 degrees a perfect crisp uh tropical evening and the sun has set two hours ago the, the ocean breeze is brushing on my face as i walk through the tide and i contemplate my life decisions as i look back up at the shore i see austin slamming laying on a, a, a towel with a girl wildly above his league and i think to myself i need to put an end to this for society <laughs> i take i take multiple steps up onto the beach and begin to unzipper my pants what would you call it fly zipper and, and right as you're talking about the uh, astrological signs that he's pointing out to her i begin to pull out my wiener and pee directly above his head <laughs> Oh. <laughs> the, the, the backsplash hits both of them on the top. Oh he screams, he, he shouts, and immediately the camp is in uproar as I am urinating directly oh. above his face. Oh my god. <laughs> he, he is so angry at me that I was peeing right above his head the whole time. She is disgusted as she storms away, going back to the girls' cabin. As, as my wiener still hangs flaccid, <laughs> urinating. <laughs> oh my god, if you had heard the conversation, Austin, so the way that the camps were set oh, up man. is they basically had a <laughs> they basically have a a boys cabin which ended up being like a mixed gender we just didn't have a lot of a lot of males still kind of off balance it. A lot of and they then, them. A lot of they and them. then there was a full females cabin. And so this girl goes to the female's cabin, which is where she's staying. And Austin just comes storming in. We're just giggling about or Me and Lee are just like giggling about like little schoolgirls about what happened. We think it's so funny. We're both really drunk. And Austin goes storming in. And he goes, Lee! <laughs> and like the most Kratos voice he can muster trying to sound intimidating. <laughs> and he's like, I had it. I was right there. <laughs> I was right there. Hey guys, I just not, literally I, I, giggling. I remember is looking down, you know, when you're like taking a piss and you're looking down at your dick. And Austin, I was blocking Austin's face with my wiener. And that's when I knew I was close enough. <laughs> oh my god, it was a spectacular. Wow. Just watching that from a view, just a fly on the wall was just a treat. And I thank you so much for that memory. I mean, Wait, again. That's- so Let's get your honest opinion, though. How close was he to to making you lose the bet? So, so uh, he claims he claims not very. He claims he claims that he won. He claims he claims that he won because of interference. Uh, talking to this girl, uh, we're we're actually not so much close with her anymore. But if there was a time like when we were in undergrad that we were we were friends with her. Um, so like, I think a couple of years after we asked her about the whole situation, she wasn't really into it. She was, it was kind of those, like, she's just playing along to be nice kind of thing. Um, yeah, so, entertaining the situation. uh, we, we put it as a split decision, 
But at the same time, both of them had drinking. It could have been a heat of the moment thing. Who knows what would have happened? Xavier's wiener made sure that there would be uncertainty for that situation <laughs> the rest of our lives. That's all it does. That's his only job in my life. <laughs> Create uncertainty. <laughs> <laughs> it just all my wiener does is create uncertainty. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you told that story. What a treat! I forgot about yeah, that. Put that on a Put that on a plaque. <laughs> I want that on my wiener does. I'll put that on your tombstone, don't worry. All my wiener does create it for your kids to see when they're mourning your death. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh that, that got dark. Oh. <laughs> is that oh. why my name is Uncertainty? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, Justin or Joe, what do we got? Let's, yeah. see, let's see you guys F top that. Follow, follow that up. God, I don't want to anymore. Mine seemed funny, and now it's not. Oh, God. I really um, that fine, that was I'll my go. Good one. Thank you for that. Um, so, uh, back when I was an undergrad, so this was a few years ago, I was a supervisor at one of like the, the campus jobs. And so I had a few people that kind of worked under me, but not for me, because we're all students there. And we hired this new person, and she was very nice. So, you know, I chatted with her during the shift, and it was fine, and I'm I'm kind of I was the person in charge, so I'm not going to be like super like I wasn't getting too un informal or anything. I was just being polite, and she seemed to like really enjoy hanging out. So, but oh, that's fine, it's cool. So I get home from that shift, and I'm, when I say get home, I mean I walk back to my dorm. So five minute walk. I had two uh, Facebook friend requests, two Instagram DMs, an email. A Snapchat request. Oh, what else was there back then? That might be it. I feel like there's a fifth thing. A yik like, yak. I yik yak. I had like requests <laughs> and messages and DMs on every social media platform from this girl. She didn't even know my Scary. last name. The last, the last I checked. Like I introduced myself as Joe. I'm gonna be your su supervisor at the shift. Yada yada. And that was the end of it. And to say the the pressure she put on me was unceasing and and very high would be an understatement. Like she was overwhelming me on all fronts. I would, I would get messages from seven different platforms and I would try to be polite and try to keep it like, you know, formal because I am her boss. And then it was just, it was just never ending. And I was just getting barraged and I was getting stressed. I was like, I don't know how to handle this anymore. I've, tr I've done everything. Like I'm the not interested. Like just trying to be polite to leaving things unopened. And she just found a way to reopen things. Like, you close a door, she kicks it down. She's like, no, I'm here, dude. I'm here. That's not good. So, <clears throat> it's getting to the point where I'm just like, I'm so flustered, I needed help. So, I went to text the boys, uh, Jake, Us. Justin, Lee, Austin, and Parker. I'm like, guys, listen, I need some help. Please help me figure out Who's how to tell this girl I'm not interested. She's the most forward girl I've ever met in my life. She's like, she's messaging me on all these platforms. I just don't know what to do. And I send it. And I put my phone down and I wait. And then I get a text from this girl saying, I saw that. Oh, and I text, no. her, I text the girl, I was like, saw what? And she said, take a look where you just sent that message. Oh, so I, no. I back out. I sent it to my work group chat. Oh, so no. The, the entirety of my staff saw it. Plus my bosses who were in their meeting. They were in their meeting together when I sent oh, the message. Oh, my God. So one of my bosses, instead of making it easier for me, responded back, "Well, who's the lucky lady?" <laughs> and I had to, <laughs> I had to make like a, a blatant lie in the group chat to be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm dealing with problems from a from a woman from my summer job, and she's and she's and I just don't. I was trying to find advice, but you know, I apologize for being so unprofessional." And she's texting me personally, like. If you're not interested, why don't you just tell me? I'm just trying to be polite. I'm trying to show you my interest. And I just, obviously, I tried to tell her I wasn't interested. But by this point, I'm so in the wrong. I have no right to no. say anything. No. I have no right to say anything. So I apologized. I apologized. I apologized. I'm Melissa, I'm so sorry. You're such a nice person. It's just it's, the way you approached it was a little overwhelming. So I was just trying to find advice because you are truly a nice person. And I didn't want to be rude. Or I didn't want to disappoint you. But... I'm, I'm just sorry. I'm just, I, I am not interested in, as, as kind as you are. It's just, I'm sorry. And, you know, she, she was pissed and she yelled at me for a while. Then she said, it's fine. I get it. <clears throat> but I couldn't go through a single shift. And I worked there like five days a week without getting laughed at and jokes said to me 
and my even my boss who wasn't even a college student she's like an older woman like she called me into her office and like ran the riot act down on me it's like who's the girl who's the girl i was like don't make me say it she's been through enough <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't make, make me yeah. say it. this poor woman yeah man and em- embarrassing yes but i think at no point were you in the wrong there and i think you definitely saved her ass not being not t- like blowing up to everyone at the time like i mean yeah she contacted me on five different applications every social media in the biz bro yeah for real she's an email she's like, she's a she is a girl that knows what she wants yeah yeah, yeah. But, yeah. flattered yeah you should <laughs> how many of those opportunities come like, nowadays girl, joe well. yeah th- th- those opportunities aren't as sparse as they used to be yeah. i bet looking back you'd be like eh, maybe it wasn't so bad <laughs> no nah, man I'm, I'm it's not me i'm not the the surrounding conquer type of guy that's not how you're gonna get me to like you i don't like the the barrage method what what are the chances Wait, do we know? I mean, do we do we know her? Or the chances? I, I don't. I don't All think. Right. I don't think. Uh, Would you? It's we can talk. Uh, we can talk about. A sad thing? We can talk about. She a little transferred more shortly after. Oh, oh, you bullied her into leaving. You Joe? bullied her. Oh, <laughs> oh I know. but I like the only saving grace is I'm pretty sure she transferred for to change her major and go somewhere else. But oh, man, no. that timing, it was like I'm the worst person that's ever lived. I I ruined this girl's life. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. That's too good. I oh yeah, well, I wanted. I kept saying I wanted to mention this. When I found out, I wasn't even at school. I was at home for a week, like a weekend thing, or maybe like a Friday we had off. I threw my phone across the room when I saw the, that I sent it to the wrong place. I just, I didn't know how to react. I was like, what? And I I tossed my phone. <laughs> I was like, this can't be right. This can't be right. And I kept looking at it, looking at it, looking at it, and I was like, this isn't real. This is... Oh. Bad day. Wow. Wow. That is a bad day, <clears throat> dude. That's a bad day. <laughs> speaking, of bad, speaking, of, speaking of bad days, Justin. <laughs> yeah, I can remember some, I mean, I can remember some bad days, I guess, but most of mine come from drinking and hardly remembering, therefore being embarrassing. I got a couple. Definitely from school. Joey can help me with this first one. We'll get this one the just co- kind of off off the chest. It's very quotable, which is why very I love quotable. It so much. Very quotable. It's just it's arguably one word or three. Um, I'm a hindrance. Oh, oh no, uh, was it four words? I'm being a hindrance. I'm being a hindrance. Yeah, I'm being, a, I'm being a hindrance. Yeah, that was kind of the punchline before the joke, I guess. But I just. We it, it was so quick. It happened so quick. Everything happened so quick that night. All right, tell tell from the top. No, tell man. from the top. Paint, paint the <laughs> paint the stage for us for the viewers I really at home. Don't, I really don't think I can paint from the top because all I remember is getting at this party and it was like this garage underneath, you know, garage <laughs> underneath this house and. God damn! What was it? The just, first thing I did when we got out of the car, Joey. So for for my no, my no, understanding, we, I think I I think I drove there, right? That was the I was. No, I drove there. I drove yeah. home. That I drove home that, that night. Oh yes, I remember. Yeah, exactly. I remember. But this was the so same we, house. This was the same house Jake drove and uh, the cop saw Austin grab uh, someone and put them in the trunk. Oh yeah. Uh, All right. So there's the a, there's house. an embarrassing story about Austin that we can tell after, but related. But like. Yeah, but so we get out of the car. And we have to park away because it's like a house party. And we the way to get into the house was under like a garage, in a, in a garage side door or something. So we go in and the, the line to get in is long for some reason. We're like, oh my god. And I, Justin's next to me. He's like, man, I'm feeling a little weird. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, we, we were in the line. We weren't even in the party yet. We were in the line, yeah. Yeah, so Justin's like getting more and more like the, uh, something's not right. And I think whoever else – Jake was with us for sure. I don't know if Lee was with us. But they're, like, ahead of us for some reason. They're, like, getting in. So Justin just kind of bolts out the back out the door the way we came. So I give him a second just, like, to breathe. But when he doesn't come back in, I follow him out. And that's when probably yeah. Justin starts to remember everything. Yes. And, yeah, you definitely just helped me actually remember part of the story. I remember I was like, Joey, I really need you to hold my hand. I need you to hold my hand. I literally won't be able to throw up. Um, unless you hold my hand, but, but like, I needed to go deep in this woods, which wasn't even woods. It was just like, like a, a bunch couple, of trees in like between the bushes. driveway. 
Yeah, it was like the trees in between <laughs> this driveway and the next one. And it was probably a little thorny, I think, too. And, like, I squeezed Joey's hand and I just threw up. And I, every, I mean, not everywhere, but definitely right there. And, oh my god, I'm such a hindrance. I'm such a hindrance. I'm so sorry. Just on And repetition. he kept saying it. I was like, why that word of all words? You're drunk. Yeah, like, I'm being a hindrance. I was like, why? Of all the words you could choose. He's very elegant with his word choice there. It was like I was taking Joey away from the party. We haven't even gotten in yet. I remember, I think Austin and I were in there for like 20, 25 minutes just doing laps trying to find you guys where you were. And I think that's when and I like, came out and saw what was happening. <laughs> it's just, oh shit. When Justin says I was holding his hand, it was, it, it was at first for like emotional support, which I was like, what are you doing? And he, he's like, hold my hand, please. So I'm holding his hand, this, this grown man, as he's puking. But then he's like, I need to get in further. And he starts, like, stepping over some branches and leaning. <laughs> so by the end, it's less emotional support and more like I'm holding this man from falling into his own vomit. And I'm just sitting there, like, anchoring him back there. People walking in like, is he good? I'm like, dude, he's fine. He's fine. He's like, yeah. Mind your business. He's fine. <laughs> as long as I'm comprehensive i'm doing all right but i'm being a hindrance and but to uh zoom into yeah that was a yeah that that for me is very quotable very good we were at that yeah, part for, we were at that part for a while too surprisingly you thought justin i think you rallied pretty hard that night too oh afterward. yeah you did good yeah Oh heck yeah! You were like I have. You're like I am done being a hindrance, and then you just like, like hey, you like <laughs> like here. chest held high, like two beers in your hand, double fisted, and you just walk right into the party. Don't even show your ID, and you just walk right in and start drinking. And I was like, damn. Yeah. If anyone ever, if we ever went back to UNE and someone asked me for my fucking ID, I would just, I would just say, dude, get the fuck out. What, what the fuck are you gonna do about it? For real, me looking up? back at that, I wish, so, like, yeah. Jake, especially Jake and I, could have just been like, look at our beards, bro. Look at half the people you live with. Well, older. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to talk shit about the people we went to school with, but like, who the fuck was gonna like, challenge, like, like, dude, what are you gonna do? Beat me or, up? Like, yeah, hey, call the bit. Good of luck. Her. I mean, oh wow. Good luck. Call the police. What are you gonna Call do? Call the police. <laughs> you're gonna need to do something with that. <clears throat> yeah, no, like, dude, if, you, if you're willing to throw down about me being 20 years old coming to your party, hey, let's let's do it. Cause I'm I'll, I'm 20 beers deep and I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, inside. 20, 20 beers deep. <laughs> I'm 20 beers deep and I can't see straight. Let's fight. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> hey, I got natty. I got, I got natty life throwing flowing through my veins. Like you wanna, yeah. You want to tussle? You feeling lucky, big guy? I, I say we try to go to the old port next uh, next week, and we have a rule where we don't show anyone our ID the whole time, and just see how big of a commotion we can make. You you don't believe I'm fucking twenty one? Are you kidding me? That's, that's, that's actually I feel that's all, actually pretty good. After all, I've been that's a good through. challenge. We're I gonna mean, have yeah. Austin Parker. We're gonna have all six of us back together. We should we should make it a uh, a challenge thing. That's a good flex on oh, a bouncer, oh. too. I mean, like, if you're just gonna, like... Yeah, what the, the fuck first, are you gonna like, do? Three, Beat me up? Yeah, the first person gets yeah, in without what showing if he does? Dude, I'm fucking 25, man. I vote. Good luck. The bouncers... <laughs> bouncers are only, what, 21? They can be 35. Oh. I'm older than you, motherfucker. What does the age have to do with anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I totally be down to see how many bars we get kicked out of just to raise hell on the town. One night. Isn't that, uh, isn't that at the? No didn't one we have a sh Didn't we have um a make sure like a make sure everyone get kicked out rule at that uh, club you were talking about earlier? Um, I think I think every I think almost everybody had gotten kicked out of that place at one point. Or I think even Joey got kicked out. Like it was like that was like even the baffling one. No, not me. Or, or, there was Did like I? maybe. I don't know if yeah, you did. got kicked yeah, out per se, but there was a point where you left and they wouldn't let you back in because it was too late and therefore, like, you, you know, got... Oh, yeah. I stepped outside for a second to make sure, like, I think there was, like, a girl in a group. Some girl. Some guy, yeah. Some guy was giving us a hard time, giving yeah. a hard time, so I stepped outside. I was like, hey, dude, could you, bouncer, could you get him to leave her alone? So then I, I was, like, half in, half out, and I went to turn around, and they, like, pushed me out. They're like, no, you're done. I was like, I'm done. Why? I'm <laughs> You're cut off. They're like, no. 
You're done. <laughs> I've had a sip of has a sip of alcohol in his lifetime. You are too drunk, sir, to be in this club right now. <laughs> I was helping a girl out. I was like, all right, you are, whatever. You are, I mean, you are it's... drunk on chivalry. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I think every single one of us uh, had had not been I, let I back in at one point. Out. I didn't. That's so Maybe you're the one off. I, you are always yeah, looking for I'm a fight surprised. whenever we drink. You are always looking for a fight. Yeah, exactly. What was Xe uh, Lee's specialty was, like, his one-off was not getting kicked out of that, despite being one of the earliest to be let in and the, the feistiest. Yes. When Lee drinks, he is the one most likely to get into a fight, that's for sure. Which is so weird, he, he looks because, like, uh, yeah, like, if they had come to me and been like, hey, we're kicking you out, I would have been like, good fucking luck. <laughs> <laughs> Come make the. You're gonna have to earn this eighteen dollars an hour. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, my man. Listen, you'll get paid enough. Good luck, my boy. Good I'm luck. right here. I ain't hiding. Come get me. I'm gonna crush your soul. I'm Listen, crush I don't know. Soul. Some of these guys are pretty large, and there's multiple of them. I think Xavier would end up outside. I'm not gonna lie. As, I as strong I would lose. as he is, I, would lose. I think I would lose. I think but I would I'd make him work for it. I honestly think <laughs> at, at that one particular establishment, I was the closest person to get into a fight there out of anybody. Probably. And you can get, can get a, when Jake's on tequila, he can get a little. Uh, I, that, I remember when there was a few times where I was like, "Oh shit, I'm not the wild one tonight." It's him. Yeah, <laughs> him and him and Austin would sometimes finish a freaking like. 500 mil bottle of tequila each, or combined. That was a, yeah, it's so, it's so much cheaper, right, than just, like, you just get, you sh don't do this, because this is not smart, but you just, extremely what, cost what we used to do is we used to just get really drunk before we go, and then I would get one or two beers a night, and this would be, you know, we'd go out on Thursday nights, and they'd be like 50 cent Bud Lights or whatever, and we'd just get one or two of those. And then just ride out the drunk, you know? Okay, don't act like 50 cent Bud Lights are, are expensive that's that's a steep but i'm saying wait, wait, wait. but i'm saying oh, so even i have step. an idea i have an idea for how we're gonna get austin shit face before we even all go right. out we'll, you guys want to hear it we'll we'll talk about that when we're done. we'll idea. talk about that when we're done when we're... all right yeah sure yeah let's hear it fuck it yeah, yeah no, no no this is a good one i, yeah. I want to share this with the public so this is my idea for uh, we i did this on deployment with someone and uh it worked really well where you basically play dumb and pretend like you don't know how to do like a tequila shot, like the salt lime shit or whatever. And so I just keep having him instruct me how to do it by <laughs> showing me how to do it. And I'm like, wait, do I take the lime first and then the salt and then the tequila? And then playing to his strength as a mansplainer, he'll be yes. like, no, you fucking idiot. This is how you do it. And then he'll take Dude. a shot. And then Dude. I'm like, wait, 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 can I start with lime, then salt, then tequila? And he's like, no! And then he just starts screaming. And no, like, for real. Stop. How many girls do you think we could just give five bucks to to just do that to him? Oh, my easily, God. Easily, maybe Caitlin and Brianna individually could go up to him separately. Oh, for free, and be like, yeah. hey, Austin, Austin, <laughs> will you show me how to take a shot? And then that's three shots in right there. And then we'll all collectively go up to him and be like, Austin, you're doing it wrong. And then, be, and then he'll be like, no, I'm fucking not. And then he'll argue, we'll argue, whatever. And then he's on his fourth tequila shot. Yeah, Next thing you know, we all take one together. And now he's five tequila shots in in an hour, in which we've all done one. And I'm feeling pretty good that I'm not going to be the one throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a it. pretty good plan, if, 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 if I can say so. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll, see. we'll see how it works. I, he definitely – but here's the thing. You have to, like – everybody has to be on the same page, right? about it and everybody has to about. actually do it wrong so like i think if someone sort of first we all do a shot and somebody just hits the lime first like a weirdo i'll do it fucking it. i'll just eat the lime dude whatever so just eat the lime first and no, then do the squeeze shot the lime and onto the salt and i'll be like and i'll be like <laughs> squeeze the lime onto the salt snort it and then just throw the shot behind my back and be like <laughs> and be like happy days or something <laughs> um <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but I think yeah, that'd be, that'd be a good idea. Cause yeah, if if, if I do it wrong, I'm like, right, but or if I say no, this is way better. You don't get a burn. He'll have to try both ways, right? And then I just get him to do two shots right off the bat. And then if everybody does that, that's two extra. That's an extra shot per person we can get him to do. Mm. That's ten shots. It's ten shots instead of five. Yeah, right? and so. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. When we go out there that night, my goal is to get him just as violently drunk as possible, call an Uber, 
to pick us up at the night and then have him throw up and be like, hey, Austin, dude, you're, you're, you're responsible for this. <laughs> you're responsible oh, for All right, audience members, drink responsibly. Take care of each other when you go out. This is more no, hyperbole than no. real life. Fuck them. Yes, yeah, no, no, Joey's right. Drink responsibly, except just... Except Christ. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I don't, what? I don't, I don't, I don't know where I was going. <clears throat> What in the world is happening here? <laughs> All right, so how, how much time we got left, guys? Uh, we're, I think 30, we went we're, we're at thirty-five. We're at thirty-five minutes right now. We way over. This was supposed to be. This was supposed to be uh, a quickie. Um, but we ended up lasting longer than we thought, so... That's alright. The viewers are welcome for a treat. Never happens. Never Story happens. of Austin's life. He lasted longer <laughs> than he thought. <laughs> I think you had that backwards. Wait, what? <laughs> I think you had that backwards. That thing you meant Austin's dream. Yeah, right? Hey, never mind. <laughs> All right. Whatever. All right, guys. Before we leave, whenever Lee is wrong or he's not – you're like, you're proving he's wrong. He doesn't like where you're going. He just goes, all right, never mind. <laughs> whatever, whatever, guys. <laughs> Dis- disregard. You got me. Disregard. 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 Uh, there's there's a funny story about Austin that we could tell about. Well, just real quick before we go, this this is the send off. So, um, one day that we went out for Austin's birthday at the very same club that I got folded over like a like a, like a table. Uh, this is while we were in college. It was his birthday, and he just got absolutely obliterated. Right? He had he had a vest on that literally said "birthday bitch" on it, and it was I think it was his twenty first birthday, maybe. Um, and he, uh, I think Justin, Justin's the last one that turns 21, right? Yep. Yeah. So this is, but you had a fake ID, so you got it anyway, right? I no, he don't did not. believe not at that time. I did. I only used my ID to buy. I didn't get, I didn't try to get it anywhere. Oh, maybe. I don't think. Were you with us then on his birthday? I don't know if you were. I don't believe not. Uh, especially if his birthday, wasn't it over break? No, yeah, it was right, I think it was right it was you two and Parker, right? No, because I remember I called we called Brianna to come pick him up. So maybe this is his birthday, our senior year, his birthday. Maybe not his twenty first birthday, but he still had the birthday bitch vest on, which is weird. I don't know, but anyway, he kept it. He kept it like he wore it two years in a row. The pompous bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, we we I I don't I lose track of Austin. It was like my job for the night to make sure that he just didn't get into like oh, too much trouble, like didn't get into a fist fight. Right, um, and I just lose sight of him for you know a good twenty minutes, and then one of the bouncers comes up to me because he noticed that we'd been interacting a lot during the night. He's like, "Yo, check your boy," and I'm just like, "Oh no, what is he doing?" So then I'm like, "Where is he?" And they're like, "He's downstairs," and downstairs is where the bathroom is. So I'm thinking, "Okay, oh, that's just not good." I see him, and I hear him faintly go, "Jake, is that Jake coming down the stairs?" <laughs> Oh my Jake. god! And I'm just like, all right, do I just turn around and go back up? For what? Like, what do I do? What do I do here? And I go in there, and, and he's like sloshed, like full cheek on the toilet seat, just oh. like drooling into the toilet. Oh and no! He goes, Too much tequila. I'm like, you think, dude? You think? <laughs> so anyway, he the bouncer follows me down there, and he goes, "You guys gotta go." I'm like, "How am I gonna get this boy up the stairs?" What do you mean? Yeah. And luckily yeah, the bouncer help me, bud. Luckily the bouncer was like, "All right, I'll help you." I was like, "All right, bro. All right, nice, nice." So we get him up. We get him up, and I call Brianna, who's was our DD. I think she was like working. Justin's now wife to be. Indeed. Yeah. That, oh, isn't that coming up? Like we talking about coming up on a year, a oh, year away from the wedding, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, one year. Three weeks and six days. Dang. Anyway, yeah. uh, Brianna, um, Justin's fiance, was gonna it was graciously DDing for us that night. So I call her and I go, hey, you have to pick Austin up. She goes, well, you know, I don't get to work for another like X amount of time. So I'll be there like 30, 45 minutes. And we had got kicked out at that point, And I wasn't going to go oh, back in and leave yeah, Austin. She was totally probably working library. Yeah, I think she was. Yeah. And um, – so I'm just sitting there out with Austin, and it's it's like raining out, and we're sitting underneath one of those things. You know how they have like the mini rain covering over like over the stairs, so their stairs aren't wet. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm sitting on one of the stairs, and Austin's just like halfway sitting on the stairs with his legs swung up on the other end, and it's there's like a there's like this gutter that's like slowly dripping rain rainwater, and it's just dripping down Austin's forehead, down his face. <laughs> Just so depressing, like, and I'm just sitting there, like, oh, what a mess. 
And Austin just goes, he goes, oh man, these shoes are so comfortable because he just got brand new shoes. And then he just unloads and throws up all over his new <laughs> shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there just rubbing his back as this dude is getting soaked, just like sitting there in his own vomit. And I'm like, oh my god, what a birthday! Anyway, that's that's my that's my Austin story. Since he's not here to defend himself, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So, any hoot? Um, anybody got any closing remarks before you end the story? Drink responsibly. Drink responsibly. Take care of your friends. Yeah. Get home safe. Don't drink and drive. Yeah. If you see yeah. us October 14th, buy us a drink. Buy us a drink or, you know, slap us in the face, whatever you want to do. Get into a fight with Lee. He'd love it. Watch He's, your belt loops. Yeah, watch your belt loops. Wear a belt. Drink responsibly. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in for this, uh, what was supposed to be a quick episode, but it ended up, like all things, just not being that way. Um, let us know if there's anything else you want us to talk about in the future. And everybody have a good night. See ya.